Aloha, this is HipFix Travel Guide on Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site located on the island of Hawaii, popularly known as the Big Island in the U.S. state of Hawaii. In this Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site Travel Guide, we'll provide information and show you Hawaii's ancient temple of Kamehameha I near Kailua Kona. We'll start this travel guide with general introduction and location information how to get to Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site once you're on the Big Island, and information and tips for visiting this beautiful historic site in Hawaii. Everything shared on this video is from our own experience based on our own visit to Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site on this Hawaiian island. Walk in the footsteps of the great Kamehameha, the first who unified Hawaii. Welcome to Hip Fig Travel Guides. If you're a travel enthusiast, then subscribe to this channel. This is Hip Fig's Beautiful America series. Welcome to the Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site Travel Guide for visitors to the Big Island, Hawaii. The Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site is located about 34 miles north from Kailua Kona at 62-3601 Kauai High Road. We drove on a clear sunny day from Kailua Kona and took Highway 19 for about 33 miles. The drive was relaxing as there weren't very many cars on the road we visited. Brown road signs for this historic site and Spencer Beach are clearly marked on the road. We drove past fields of lava beds, resorts, and wild donkey signs, all with the backdrop of the sparkling Pacific Ocean. From Highway 19, we made a left onto Highway 270 towards the water for about half a mile and then made another left at the clearly marked signs for Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site and Spencer Beach. We continued straight on Kauai High Road and on the right hand side is the parking lot for the National Historic Site. If you continue straight on Kauai High Road, at the end of the road is Spencer Beach Park. We made a ride from Kauai High Road into the parking lot of Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site parking lot. Parking is free and there was plenty of spaces in the parking lot when we visited during a weekday. Please be aware that the parking lot entrance, the top gate closes around 4.45 p.m. and the parking lot exit, the bottom gate, closes at 5.15 p.m. All cars parked in the visitor center parking lot after closing will be towed. Admission to the Pu'u Kohola Heiau National Historic Site is free and it's open all year round. By the way, did you know that the island of Hawaii has 12 separate climate zones? It's amazing how different temperatures and scenery are around the island. This side of the island tends to be sunnier and the beaches are more sandy. The Pu'u Kohola Heiau Visitor Center is open from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. The Visitor Center is small but worth visiting. Inside there are exhibits and displays such as traditional koa wood spear display and a rock lifting display. The small museum has traditional weapons dis uh, display, archaeology display, and original paintings by renowned artist and historian Herb Cain. There is also an open air theater and ranger talks there. Please check the schedule when you arrive. There is also a non-profit park store. From the open air section of this visitor center, there's a full view of Pu'u Kohola Heiau and the ocean, which is spectacular. Bring your binoculars to watch for sharks. If you have a child, pick up a junior ranger book. Complete the series activities by age during a park visit and return to a park ranger and receive an official junior ranger badge and junior ranger certificate. After we got our Junior Ranger badge, we downloaded the free tour app on our smartphones before walking on the paved trail. Check with our rangers for more information. As we walked down this portion of Alakahakai National Historic Trail, 
We listen to the free audio guide as we listen to the historic information about the people and this place. By the way, the Alakahakai National Historic Trail is a 175-mile corridor and trail network of cultural and historical significance to Hawaii's history. We walked this paved half-mile loop historic trail and we walked in the footsteps of the first king of the unified Hawaii, Kamehameha, to the Pu'ukohola Heiau. The Pu'ukohola Heiau is a sacred temple. This temple symbolizes a prophecy come true. Kamehameha built this temple as a result of a prophecy that came through from a kahuna who told Kamehameha that if he built a temple on the hill of Pu'ukohola and dedicated to his family's war god, he would be able to unify all the islands. Just below Pu'ukohola Heiau stands Mailakini Heiau, which was a temple converted later into a fort. We continue to walk on the flat trail down some stairs to a small beach area called the Pelicane. Unlike the rest of this historic site, this part is lush and lined with trees for shade. This was the site of the Royal Courtyard. There's an unpaved trail to the Pohakole Gulch. Here we found a fish pond and trees and rested in the shade as we listened to the birds chirping as we watched the glistening water before us. Further beyond this point is the homestead of John Young. John Young was a captured English sailor. He became a trusted advisor to Kamehameha I and along with another sailor, Isaac Davis, taught Kamehameha's warriors how to use muskets and canyons, which led to all of Hawaii Islands being under Kamehameha's rule. John Young chose a homestead near Pukohola Heiau, which is part of Pukohola Heiau National Historic Site. One of his granddaughters, Emma, would marry Kamehameha IV and become queen. We continued on the trail to the stone leaning post and hoped to catch a glimpse of the sharks as they passed over the submerged temple of Hale Okupuni, which was dedicated to the shark god. Even though now it's impossible to see the temple, the sharks still can be seen in the early morning hours and you can usually see sharks just offshore, near where the temple is believed to be located. During the winter months, humpback whales are also a very common sight, as well as spinner dolphins, which can be seen jumping in the ocean. Although this loop trail is only a half mile, there is no shade on most of the trails, so please make sure to wear a sunscreen and or a hat and bring water before taking the trail. When we completed the trail, we were hot. We used the facilities and walked back to our car. We drove down to Spencer Beach Park, which is just down the hill. Spencer Beach Park is one of the few white sand beaches on the Big Island, a contrast from the usually rocky beaches you'll find around. It's a good place for swimming and snorkeling as a long shallow reef offshore keeps out high waves and strong currents. This is a good place for a family outing on the beach. They also have restrooms, picnic tables, showers, tennis courts, a roof pavilion, parking lots, and a camp area, and also a lifeguard tower. We found a shaded spot under a large native tree and went into the shallow and calm waters of this beach. There were very few people there as it was a weekday, so plenty of space for us to enjoy this sandy beach. We had a snack and enjoyed the water to cool off. Combine your visit to Pu'ukohola Hiao with Spencer Beach. Don't forget your swimsuit and towel. The Pu'ukohola Hiao National Historic Site is where the history makers of Hawaii lived. Experience this history and the beauty of this historic site and beach area. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our HipFig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.